everybody, John here. Welcome to my next installment, True Crime Podcast, Finding My Brother's Killer. Well, last, we need to discuss the autopsy. And I fear that this could be a three-parter, because there is so much shit going on with the body, you wouldn't believe it. Let's dive right in there. So, even before his body had gotten cold, well, that's not true, but anyway. We were told three different means of death. My brother died of a drug overdose. That much is true. But what drugs exactly he died of changed three times uh, in the first day. Uh, once it was MDMA. Uh, I think the next time around it was ecstasy and uh, barbiturates. Uh, I can't remember exactly what it was. These are some of the things that initially triggered my oh no he didn't uh, response to this because you don't get home at 10.30 at night on a work night and do uh, ecstasy or MDMA. Uh, I've never done either of those two but I know enough about it to know that's not what you do. They keep you up for the next two days drinking water and dancing. Anyway, what my brother did die of pay close attention here now my brother died of methamphetamine poisoning. He had an amount in his body equal to 4,100 nanograms per milliliter. 4100. Zero, zero. My brother died of fentanyl poisoning. He had 5.1 nanograms per milliliter in his body according to the autopsy report right here. Now, I say that because here's what I propose to you. If you're going to overdose, you would take what you, and again, I've never done any of these kind of drugs, but I've, this is what I've surmised based upon my research. If you, you usually pinch off a little, you pinch off a little, but the problem is that this shit is a little more or a lot more concentrated than you're used to. So even though visually it's the same amount that you normally would do, you wind up overdosing slightly. You overdose. It's not a gross overdose. It's just like a you overdose because you took a little more than you're used to. Why do I say that? Because according to this document... which is the uh, Chief Medical Examiner's Office for the State of North Carolina. And this is toxicologies on various pharmaceuticals. The amount of methamphetamine that is toxic and kills you is 0.12 to 5. Is enough, is toxic, is enough to... That's like rolling the dice, pulling the trigger on a uh, Russian roulette gun. It's fatal, deadly, you are done, is 0.09 to 64 nanograms per milliliter, milliliter. 64, you drop dead. It's the equivalent of having like a blood alcohol of like 0.5, okay? 64, you are dead on the ground. Why do I say this? Because, again, remember, my brother's levels were 4,100. This was not a mistake. This was not a little... It had to be the whole fucking cigarette packed with meth in order to kill you. Straight meth, not cut. It was a bullet in that cigarette that killed him. The same thing goes for the fentanyl. Okay, I'll just tell you that. We won't go into the numbers. It doesn't matter. But the fact of the matter is he died with enough fentanyl to kill three other people in him. So he died with enough meth to kill 41 other people. Think of that. 41 other people. And enough fentanyl to kill three other people. This, again, as I said, is not a mistake. This was not a mistake. This was intentional. This is not something you would do to yourself. Okay? I keep saying he was murdered. 
this is pretty big uh, in my book. Anyway, but here's the problem. The medical examiner is sort of pissed on this because here's what it says in the narrative. And I'm only going to give you a, a little of it because it's a long-winded and full of shit. A uh, 38-year-old man who was found unresponsive in his residence with drug paraphernalia nearby. He had a history of fentanyl use and a previous overdose one week prior to when he was found. Again, that is hearsay bullshit that came from Desiree. And I can prove it. And I will prove it. And I'm telling you, the proof is in the Department of Corrections drug tests. We're not there yet. I haven't, I mean, I have received them. I know the whole picture now. But in your book, in your timeline, I haven't received that information yet. So I'm still sort of working through it. Okay. Now, let me tell you a little about the mechanics of this autopsy. Okay. And I'll tell you, what we're going to talk about why it's fucked up. Uh, my brother died on the 21st. They, at 1 a.m., they put him in the wagon. They take him to the office of the medical examiner. At 6 a.m., he's rolled through the loading dock. He's ro 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 wrote in. He's logged in. I don't know how, how you want to call that. Uh, uh, then they start processing the body. And that's uh, taking his clothes off, washing the body down. Uh, putting the clothes and the belongings in a plastic bag, uh, and taking preliminary photographs. That was on the 21st. That was that Monday. Now, my parents, that, so that day, that morning, they conducted, they, this woman, this doctor, a Lauren Dvorak, She's the assistant medical examiner. She conducted the autopsy on my brother. And this is her report. My parents, being who they are, wanted a second opinion. So they, because New Mexico is so small that there's no other medical examiner offices in the state, to get a true outsider involved would have required shipping the body to another state and getting somebody to do the exam there, or bringing that person in-house. Uh, and time did not seem to allow that. In hindsight, anyway. So, what my parents wound up doing was requesting that the office of the medical examiner there in Albuquerque perform a second autopsy. Now, this is the interesting part. Lauren Dvorak performed the first autopsy. She's the assistant medical examiner. Uh, I don't know the other person's name offhand. We will refer to her as Dr. Boss Lady. Okay? Dr. Boss Lady is the senior medical examiner. Just the two of them are licensed by the state of New Mexico to conduct medical examinations. But that's okay, because they provide enough crossover here, right? There's redundancy here. So, what normally would happen would be Lauren Dvorak would conduct the first examination, and then if a follow-up was required, Dr. Boss Lady would do that examination, or vice versa. Makes sense, right? It's a, it's a means of uh, providing cross-check. Dr. Boss Lady was supposed to conduct the second autopsy the following Tuesday. And at the last minute, Lauren Dvorak requested that she instead be allowed to do the second autopsy. So, in essence, she did both autopsies. She covered her ass for uh, the weirdness and fuck-ups that were to ensue within the investigation. That's ten minutes right there. I can't hold you any longer. This is going to at least turn into a two-parter because I'm on a roll.